Hey everyone, T today um, welcome to part C, or 3C, no, 3D, sorry, of the um, list manipulation tutorial for Grasshopper, or Grasshopper Grasshopper list manipulation, whatever you, order you want to put it in. Um, I am going to show you the last part, which is what we said in the last tutorial, the partition list. So today we're going to be making this using partition list, this type of uh, articulation right here. So these represent these all represent a point so one two three so like this so each it's basically making the same thing with this using the same points we're going to make this not the same thing so let's do that real quick i'm just going to delete this real quick so we're going to basically do the same thing as all these other last parts we're going to do a construct point then we're going to do a move then we're going to do a, um, and then we're going to move it in the x direction, and then with a series. It's basically the same thing, so I'm not going to go too slowly on this part since you guys already know this. And if you guys don't, uh, make sure you understand this part. This was on part A, B, and C, so I'd hope you guys would know by now. So we're going to move it in the y direction by 5. So here it is. Here's those points. Oopsie, let me highlight this. So here are those points right here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to partition the list into two. Now what that means is we're going to read the branch as uh, two. Instead of, let's say, if we look at this panel real quick, let's just use this last move as an example, not that move. It says zero through nine. So what happens if we graph that list? When we graphed it, it looks like this. Remember, it creates it all in a separate branch. I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember showing you guys this in part 3a, but to clarify, this is what grafting does. It creates all these in one branch, as you can see. So let's do that. So basically what a partition list does is partition list does is it gives it a list. And let's say the size is 2. So as you see, partition list looks very familiar. It looks just like the uh, coal pattern uh, in terms of the amount of nodes. And the size is basically saying the amount of partitions we want. So I asked for two partitions. Now, what does that mean? Like, what does two partitions mean? Right? I, I wouldn't know. So let's plug in the panel and figure out. Oh, so basically, if we look at this, we're doing, instead of, it's just a group of one, because a graph is basically just grouping it in one, so it's making each separate branch, like I said before, but now it's adding two, not adding two, it's grouping them into two, so this is grouping in one, so it's going to have a total of nine branches, T no, technically ten, but zero counts as one, so zero counts as a number, so technically a total of, it is a total of ten, so but zero counts as a number, like I said many times. So right now it's grouping it in groups of two instead of groups of one, which is not really a group, but basically separating into each individual branch. Each individual branch now has two. So let's get on with it. So this is partition list, chunks. So that was just a lesson for that part. Let's do it real quick now. So we're gonna do a partition list, geometry list, the size is 2, and let's plug in our panel to make sure everything's fine, just to clarify, and yep, it is perfectly A-OK, -okay, as you can see, it's just that. So, once we have that, um, we want to also partition the bottom part as well. So right now we just partition the top part, let's partition the bottom part. Partition list, let's plug this in the list. Two, and let's check with our panel to make sure everything's okay. And everything, crap, come on, seems okay. So they seem to be working. So what we want to do is create that zigzag pattern we had before. Not really zigzag; it's the kind of that that pattern that we had before. Um, so what we're going to do is create. Basically, we're going to create the lines, those lines that work like that. So right now, 
if we draw a polyline, it's going to basically work like this. It's going to connect 0 to 1 and 2 to 3. So it's going to connect 0 to 1 and 2 to 3, but not 1 to 2. So let's do that real quick so we can get a visual on this. Polyline, connect it into the... You can also connect it into the panel. You don't have to necessarily connect it into the partition. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to connect it to the panel. And as you can see, it connects it from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, but not 0 to 1 and 1 to 2. So it skips... This one's 3 to 4, right? You know, right? Yeah, it's skipping 3 to 4. So we made that top part. So let's do that again with the bottom part, polyline. Now it's making basically a mirror of this, but that's not what we want. We want it to draw the lines from instead of 0 to 1, we want to inverse it. Instead of 0 to 1, we want it from 1 to 2. So what we can do is we can actually do a, um, a call index, which is what we learned from part 3b. And plug this in here and we know we want to get rid of this point because then it can draw from this to this so when we partition it it'll only draw from this point to this point instead of this point to this point so we'll do zero and plug that in and then all we do is replace this list with the move list and as you can see it turns orange uh, the reason why is because there's not enough points for the polyline but it still works as you can see because technically the polyline is saying um, it's missing that one point there's no other point for it to go off of so this second point doesn't exist so it's saying there's an error but that's exactly what we wanted so it's fine so it's a little hard to see but here is the green the highlighting so we have this and now we have this so we have the opposite this part this part this part this part so all we need now is those vertical lines so let's do that real quick. Let's just draw a line, do a line component. These are called components, but I call them nodes. But anyways, so all we need to do is basically do the top part and the bottom part. Just do that boring line that we did in the very beginning. So let's do the top part will be in the start and the end will be in the bottom part. Now we have that. And to see more clear, I'm going to actually bake all this real quick. I'm going to group it, yes please, bake, yes please, bake, yes please, and now we have our lines, so let's, oh, I don't think I baked this one, pretty sure I didn't, okay, there we go, I also baked the points by accident, but anyway, so as you can see, it did create this, let me move this up a little bit. Maybe put on a different layer so it looks a little more contrast. There we go. So as you can see, it did create that zigzag sort of pattern. And that's how, and that's the end of the mis list manipulation section of uh, Grasshopper. So, you can see it took four lessons for that. And it show, this shows this is only really the basics of list manipulation. There is a lot more to list manipulation that I'm not going to go over for the basic tutorial. This is just the basic parts. Um, if you want to go over them all, here's all the list manipulation items. We use list item, partition list. You can also reverse list. Um, this one is somewhat useful. This one is useful in some cases. And there's a lot of other ones, as you can see. So. And we did use weave, which is right here. So, so yeah, guys. Um, um, maybe in a later tutorial, I'll teach some more advanced uh, list manipulation and understanding it more. But for right now, that's where I'm going to leave it at. Just four parts for list manipulation because it's already pretty long for how it is in terms of for one part of Grasshopper. So yeah, guys. Uh, that's pretty much it for this list manipulation. And the next one, we're probably going to go over. I'm going to go over more, hmm, I'm not too sure. I'll look at what we can and what's the best way to approach it. And uh, yeah, I'll go over that. So see you guys on the next tutorial uh, soon. Uh, thank you guys for watching.